The most common way to learn any programming language is to start by printing something on the screen. And it's tradition to print the words, Hello World. So let's start there and see all the ways we can print text to the screen. Let's dive right in and open up Pico 8. Open a blank game and let's type in print, then parentheses to give it information, and then inside of quotation marks, hello world. Run it. Well done. That is how you print any words or symbols to the screen in Pico 8. Now the tradition is satisfied, let's look at what else it can do. Let's play around a little and see what happens when we print different things. Can we print a really long sentence? Oh, that went off the right side of the screen, so print does not automatically move long text to new lines. Good to know. Can we print just one letter? Yep. Can we print a number? Yep. Can we print a large number? Cool. Can we print a mix of letters, numbers, and symbols? Awesome. Notice that the cursor automatically moves to the next line for us each time we print something. And since we are not clearing the screen, we can still see everything we printed so far. Go ahead and take a few minutes to try printing whatever you'd like. Pause the video. I'll wait. And moving on. We can use screen coordinates to tell print where to start printing on the screen. Print, text, then after the quotation marks, we separate the next information with a comma, and we give it X and Y coordinates, always in that order. For the X coordinate, choose something between 0 and 127 so it's on the screen, and for the Y coordinate, choose another number between 0 and 127. So this is telling Pico 8 to print the word text at point 70x and 10y. Let's run it. There it is up here now, instead of being automatically written where the cursor is. Let's try a different coordinate. How about 50-50? Cool. We could keep going, but the screen is starting to get crowded since we aren't clearing it. So before printing anything, let's clear the screen with CLS. That's better. Now take a few minutes to print different text to different places around the screen. Practice those screen coordinates and you might discover a few things about print before I point them out. Pause now. 3, 2, 1. Moving on. If you played around with print thoroughly, you might have noticed that your text is always printed to the right of the coordinate you chose. To make it more obvious, I'm going to use PSET to color the pixel at the same coordinate a bright red. And now you can see that the coordinate we gave print is the top left corner of the first character printed. A lot of things in Pico 8 work this way, with the coordinates we give being the top left corner of what we want to write or draw to the screen. And whatever is drawn on the screen goes down and to the right from our starting coordinate. This should help explain why, when we print something at 0, 0, it shows the entire text. But if we print something closer to the right or bottom edges of the screen, like 120, 120, then our text gets cut off. Anything more than 127, and of course we don't see anything because it prints outside of the screen. But what happens if we start printing outside the screen on the left side, with negative 5x, and 60y near the middle? Aha! So we don't see the red pixel because that coordinate is off the screen, but we do see the end of the text printed as it was written enough to the right to be on the screen at this point. Alright, let's move the text back on the screen before we continue. Okay, that works. Now let's customize how we print with one more option. Colors. Just like PSET, which we don't need anymore, in print, after the coordinates, add another comma. And now we can give it a color number. Remember that we can space out the information inside of parentheses to make it easier to read. We can also use a comment to make a note for ourselves so we don't get mixed up between all these numbers. So print this text at these coordinates and in this color. I'll remind you what the color numbers are on the side here, but don't forget, you can always go into the sprite editor 
and hover your mouse on the color you want to see the number in the bottom left corner. The default print color has been number 6, a light gray. So let's try a few other colors. Remember that we can change the background color when we clear the screen. So we have a lot that we can play around with in just these two lines of code. Ah, oh, that looks nice. I could see this used in a game. Classic. Ooh, too bright. I like this one. This is a pretty good way of testing color combinations, especially when you have to consider what colors you choose to make reading text easy in your game. Go ahead and find a color combination that you like. I suggest a darker color background and a bright color for text. Notice that the lower numbers, 0 through 5, are all darker colors, and the rest are quite bright. Pause and play around with the colors yourself. 3, 2, 1. Moving on. Now let's print on more than one line of code. There are a few different ways to do this, but we're going to keep it super simple and just use print more than once. Let's go to a new line and type print, open parentheses, in quotes the word here, and just close parentheses. I'm not going to give it any coordinates nor a color number, just to see what happens. Take a second before running this code to guess at where we will see here being printed, and in what color. Doing this while you learn to code will really help you get a strong understanding of how coding works. Pause here, read the code, and use all the information you know to predict what you think will happen when we run it. 3, 2, 1. Lock in your predictions, and now let's run it, and compare our prediction with what actually happens. Interesting. So, it did not go back to use the default color. It used the same color as the last text. And it did not continue printing to the right of the text. It moved to the next line down the screen, just like the cursor has been doing. In fact, that happened because of the cursor's automatic behavior of moving itself down to the next line after printing. And since we aren't giving coordinates to the second print, it will just start printing wherever the cursor is, which is now on a new line. Another interesting thing to notice is that the cursor is not resetting all the way back to the left side of the screen. You might assume that it would go back to the far left like a normal text editor does when you press enter. But in Pico 8, when the cursor moves down a line, it goes back to the last X coordinate it was told to print at. That's why these multiple rows of text stay lined up and we get this margin on the left. So, how accurate was your prediction? If you made some incorrect assumptions, then this was a good taste of what coding problems are like, where what we think should happen doesn't match what actually happens. And oftentimes you're going to think, why isn't this doing what I told it to do? But you have to realize that the code is always doing exactly what you told it to do. And most likely you just didn't have all the information about how the code works to make the correct prediction. So as you practice and play around with code, take the time to make a prediction before running it and then see if you are correct or not. This will help you learn what assumptions you're making about the code. Anyway, back to our code using print. So now that you know the behavior of this second print, you can use it to save yourself some time by not always having to type in coordinates and colors. One last thing that is cool is that print is pretty smart compared to other functions. Normally, you have to be very careful when giving information inside of parentheses. The order of the information is really important. So you have to learn what values a function expects in the parentheses and the order that the function expects the information to be in. Print expects the first value to be what you want printed. The X coordinate second, the Y coordinate third, and the color number fourth. However, print is actually a little flexible in this order. If we only give it two pieces of information, print no longer takes the second information as the X coordinate. So if we like how it is automatically printing on a new line, and we just want to change the color, then it's really easy. 
tell it what to print, then what color. Nice and simple. So let's duplicate this line a few times, change it up a little, and test it out. Let me show you the code and the results side by side so we can follow along and understand what happened. It colored the first line the way we told it, and placed it where we specified. Then, because we didn't specify coordinates on the next line, it automatically moved the cursor down on the y-axis to a new line each time, but still printed the text along the same x-coordinate. On the second line, where we did give it a new color number, it changed colors, and any lines after it stayed that new color until we changed the color again. Now we can see that the print function follows exactly what we tell it to do, and we can see where it is assuming what we want it to do by handling things in default ways. When you start making games, weird things like this will go against how you would assume they work, and you probably won't know all the default and automatic behavior to explain it. So it's important when you are learning to use functions like print here to pay close attention to 1. What information it needs 2. What information is optional 3. The order that you give the information and 4. The default behavior Alright, I think that's all you need to know about print right now, and by putting all of this together, you can print some pretty interesting things to the screen. Are you ready for your next side quest? You can choose to fulfill any one or all of this villager's requests. And here they come now. Hi, I have a clothing store, and I need a sign that shows people our fabric color options. Can you print the numbers 1 through 15, but in those exact colors for me? I also do custom jobs where I can design someone's name into the fabric. Can you give me some ideas by printing your name one letter at a time in a really cool pattern? Most people like boring solid color fabrics, but I love books and I dream of making clothes with a fabric that has a whole story printed on it. Can you print a short story that fills the entire screen and all the text stays neatly on the screen? It'll be wonderful to use that for my dream fabric pattern. If you can do that and you're feeling really ambitious, I bet you could fill the whole screen with text, but this time use symbols to create a whole picture. That'd take a lot of work, but it would be amazing. Thanks for the help. I can't wait to see what designs you come up with. Even using only the information you know so far in this course, clearing the screen, coordinates, color numbers, and now the print function, you can create some really impressive things just by putting in the time and effort to figure out how to do it. So go have fun and practice a lot before tackling the next video. And feel free to share what you make. There are Discord groups, a Pico8 subreddit, and the hashtag Pico8, without a dash, is used on many social media sites. Remember, you can press Ctrl-6 to capture your screen, making it easy to share whatever you're working on. If you are enjoying this course and want to support more videos and courses like this, consider becoming a member on Coffee. Links to everything we've mentioned are in the description. And if you can't afford to give anything right now, that's fine. Just say thank you to these amazingly generous people who have made it possible for this course to be free for you to learn from. Subscribe to this channel, and to see all the other content we provide, visit our website, nerdyteachers.com.